In this video, I'm going to discuss the basic process of cloning. I don't want you to know every little bitty detail about the, you know, the in-depth kind of stuff. I just want you to understand the basic concept of how a clone is made. We talked about the nucleus in the previous video. The nucleus contains chromosomes. Those chromosomes contain DNA, which contain the genes, which are the blueprints for the proteins that make you, you. So in order to clone an organism, you have to have, you have to have its nucleus. You have to have its nucleus. The history of cloning and the thoughts about cloning have gone, go all the way back to the 1930s. And then we saw a major breakthrough in the 90s. Most of you are familiar with Dolly. Uh, that's what we're going to focus on a little bit. And then I'll talk about some of the other animals that have been cloned since then. So here is a picture of Dolly. I'm going to go through again how she was created, again in basic terms. I just want you to get the generalities of how this process occurs. So what they did is they took a cell from one type of sheep, Findor set. They took a cell from one type of sheep, and what they did is they took the nucleus out of that cell. They took the nucleus out of that cell, and they got rid of the rest of the cell. The next step was then to go to a different type of sheep, a black face sheep, and to take the nucleus out of that sheep's cell. So we now have a nucleus from our first sheep, and we have we have the empty cell, at least it's missing its nucleus, of another sheep. Then what they did is they fused that nucleus with the cell from the sheep cell that didn't have a nucleus. So we have the nucleus of the first sheep, the cell of the second sheep, and then they were fused. They were fused. That's not very hard to do from a laboratory standpoint. It's not hard to take the nucleus out of cells, leave them empty, use the nucleus, and so on. This next step, though, a lot of things can go wrong. So you fuse them, and then you have to get the process of mitosis to start. So what they did is they gave it a burst of energy, electricity if you want, to try to get this cell that they've now produced to start going through mitosis, to start going through mitosis, to start dividing. In this part, a lot of things can go wrong, and many times the fused cell will stop at this point. Or if it does th start through mitosis, the mitosis, the cells that are being produced in the shape of the organism are abnormal. Then what they did, once they had a developing embryo, once they had a developing embryo, so it was, it was going through mitosis correctly, it looked somewhat normal. They then put they then put the embryo into a third sheep, into the uterus. Then what happened was a lot of things go wrong here too. Miscarriages, um, not many were successful in going through this process, but then one or some of them go through the full process correctly, and then a baby sheep is born. Now, look at the sheep. Okay? This is the uterus the sheep developed in. This is the cell, the empty cell, and this is where we got, this is where we got the nucleus. So, what did the sheep look like? The sheep looked like the cell that we got the nucleus from. Now you may be wondering, here's Dolly, so here is the, the mother in the sense of the uterus that she came out of, that notice she does not look anything like it. What she looks like is the sheep where we got the cell from. Now why was Dolly named Dolly? Because if we go back into this, where they got this original cell is from the udder, or the booby, if you want to call it that, of the first sheep. So who has the biggest boobs we know? That would be Dolly Parton. And so Dolly the sheep was named after Dolly Parton. Now, looking at Dolly, you have a lot of questions. How old is Dolly? Is Dolly the age of the original sheep she came from, that cell? Or is she the age of when she was born? One of the questions they had also was, could Dolly reproduce? And she could. Dolly actually had her firstborn, was Bonnie, and then she actually had triplets during her life, which is rare for sheep. Now, Dolly did have some abnormalities. Dolly died on February 14, 2003, of severe respiratory problems. So she was actually euthanized because she was so unhealthy due to these respiratory problems. 
Some of her health issues included she was overweight, arthritis, and lung problems. So these bring in, these health problems bring in the question of how old was Dolly, actually. Most sheep like Dolly live to 11 or 12. Especially a sheep like Dolly, you don't just take the first cloned mammal and throw her out in the field and live like the other sheep. She was probably very well taken care of, but she only was six and a half years old when she died. So the question is, Dolly probably was closer in age to the original sheep she came from as opposed to as opposed to when she was actually born. So this is actually a picture of the stuffed Dolly. Other clone species, you got mice, you got cows, a goat, not sure the year on that, a pig, cat, I'll show you that in a second, rabbits, why we feel the need to clone rabbits, they do a pretty good job of reproducing on their own, but it has been done, race horses in 2003, uh, you can think about the possible ramifications or, or legal and ethical issues that go with that, we've also tried to clone endangered species. Uh, the bang tang was a deer cow like uh, creature and they tried to bring it back they're actually thinking of trying to clone a woolly mammoth they have found woolly mammoths that are intact enough and their cells are still the dna in those cells are still intact enough that we may be able to clone a woolly mammoth again that brings up some pretty strong ethical considerations when they cloned a cat not surprisingly, the name of the clone was called Copycat. So this is Copycat as a kitten. This is Copycat and the cat that the first cell came from. So when you think of a clone, we tend to think of things that they would look exactly alike and act exactly alike. If you look at these two animals, they do not. They do not look alike. So is a clone truly an exact replica? In this case, the answer is no. Issues with dollies and clones in general. It took 277 nuclear transfers to get dolly. So it took 277 of taking the nucleus of one cell, putting it into another cell. From that point on, 276 did not make it. Did not make it. So that brings up some pretty strong issues in terms of cloning. So in cattle, only 4% of the eggs that have received a transplanted nucleus survive. Dolly had old DNA. They studied her DNA, and it was older than from the time she was born. It was close, more closely related to the age of the sheep where her original cell came from. Dolly also, Dolly also developed arthritis early in life, again, maybe because her DNA was old. Many cloned animals have large organs and don't survive. Okay, get ready. There's going to be a noise, I think, on this next bullet. There it is. Okay, so here's a calf on a respirator, a cloned calf who did not make it because her lungs were so large. Why this occurs, we don't know. But here you have the original mouse. Here is the cloned mouse from that. And you can see how much larger it is and not healthy and its organs are larger and it, they do not function as well. Okay. So the killer task of cloning, this just goes through, it goes through step by step, the nuclear transfer, the cell division, and what the success rate is. So you see the nuclear transfer, pretty high success rate, cell division, but by the time you get done, by the time you get all the way to are they born, it goes very low. Cat is less than a percent, sheep only two percent, a cow only about 1%. Now down here with humans, most people can agree that the cloning of humans is not very ethical. That trying to create an organism, a full organism, is not, is not, most, I, very few people, if anybody, agrees that we should be doing it. But what they have allowed is the first couple steps to occur. What happens though is you get the nuclear transfer, once you start to get them in cell division, you are not allowed to keep them going. They're supposed to be destroyed. So you see how the percentage drops here. These, as, as far as we know, it's not to say that there's not some scientist somewhere doing this experiment, is not allowed, is illegal. So again, you can imagine, you're not going to create all these embryos and lose, and lose the majority of them. And then take the risk that if the baby was actually born, all the health problems that they might have. 
So human cloning, we have this idea that if we clone it, we will end up with exact replicas. That obviously is not true. Again, getting into ethical considerations, um, it's, it's never and it shouldn't be done because of a lot of the issues that we've talked about previously. I wanted, though, introduce you to two types of cloning, one that we've talked about and the second one we have not. Reproductive cloning is cloning for the sake of producing a genetically identical baby. Ma, uh, Dolly was an example. This, most people agree on humans, is not ethical. But there is some question with other animals. Like if you have a cow that makes really good milk, would you like to clone that cow so you have a bunch of cows that can make high quality milk? If you have cows that when butchered give you a high quality meat, do you want to clone that cow or that pig for the same reason to get the higher quality meat? Those are different issues. But there's another type of cloning called therapeutic cloning where you'll actually use stem cells, which we'll talk about later, to cure diseases, where you're actually cloning cells, not the whole organism. So by cloning a cell, you can now produce cells that can carry out a function which may help cure a disease, which may help cure a disease. So this is a little different. We could, in the case of cancer, one type of treatment that exists is cancer can kind of hide itself from a person's immune system, but if you can find an immune system cell that actually can fight the cancer, if you can clone that white blood cell and put it back into the person, you actually may have a way to cure the cancer using the person's own immune system. So again, I want you to know the difference between reproductive and therapeutic cloning. Therapeutic cloning, while, while it has its issues, is different and I want you to be open to the idea of that possibility depending on the risks associated with it. Okay, so here's my question. I'm going to go through a brief scenario. You're going to listen to the scenario, and if you need to listen to it more than once, do that. And then you're going to answer the question, what color is the clone, on a quiz that's on Blackboard. Okay, if you have markers, if you get a yellow marker, a blue marker, and a green marker, or yellow, blue, and green paper, you can do that, or else you can just listen and see if you can answer the question correctly. Okay, we're going to take this yellow, let's say yellow sheep, okay? We're going to take this yellow sheep cell, and we're going to take out the nucleus of the yellow sheep cell. And we're going to get rid of the rest of the cell. And we're going to put that yellow sheep nucleus to the side. Then we're going to take a blue sheep, and we're going to take an egg from that blue sheep. And then from that egg, we're going to remove the blue nucleus. And we're going to get rid of the nucleus and keep the cell, the empty cell, from the blue sheep. Now take, take that yellow nucleus, and you're going to fuse the yellow nucleus with the blue cell. And then we're going to zap it with electricity, and it's going to start to go through development. We're then going to take this developing embryo and place it in the uterus of a green sheep. That green sheep, the embryo, will then go through development, and then the baby sheep will be born. So the question I have for you that you have to do on the quiz is, what color sheep comes out? Your choices are green, yellow, or blue. Make sure you, if you need to play this again, do that to make sure you have a clear answer because you have one time to take that quiz. It's one question worth five points.